Okay, disclaimer. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act, 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing non-profit educational or personal use tips. Non-profit educational or personal use tips the balance in favour of fair use. This video was made for entertainment purposes and is transformative in nature. Hi there and welcome back to Crime and Justice. Right. Oh, God, what a day. It's been horrible here. But that's nothing new. Nothing new in Scotland. Nothing new, new in the UK to have horrible weather. I don't think we've had a summer this year. I think they've literally gone from... We've had the winter, we've had the spring. And then it's jumped the flipping summer. We just... No, not having summer this year. No, not having it. We're going to go straight to the autumn. Or fall as in the USA. So yes we've had a couple of nice days here and there but not enough to actually say we had a nice summer. Right. I've learned about the seven seven types of rain we get in, in the UK. I've learned about that. Anyway, so, today I've been up in the clouds again, very foggy, very cloudy, and where I live I'm quite high, so I'm up in the clouds. Right, I hope you've all had a nice day, or having a nice day, whatever you're doing at the moment, you might be having breakfast, you might be having lunch, you might be having your dinner at your evening meal, I don't know. I had a bit, I was good today, I've been good today, I've been eating healthy, I had a, a hamburger, a beef burger earlier, yeah, but I had salad with it, I had beef burger and fries, but I did have salad, and then tonight I had one of these little, what, what they call a pocket pizzas, I love them, just big enough for me, so I had one of them, and again I was good, I had salad with it again. So I've been good today. I've been eating a lot of my veggies and greens. I've lost count of how many coffees I've drank, but like, neither here or there. Anyway, today we've got a new interview. Not been seen before. Unless you've seen it elsewhere on another channel. Right, but... This is an interview with Jen Soto by the police. And so I was quite surprised. And I'll tell you something now I have got records, paperwork on this guy, on everything. But I've got to go through it all. Because I was reading part of it, one section of it, and it had the name, the date of birth, his address, and I'm thinking, you can't put that out there. So I've got to go through every piece of paper and mark it out. Anything with a name, a date, address, anything like that, I've got to mark it off. That shouldn't be put out there, you know what I mean? They've literally... Um, blacked all the, a lot of information out so that we can't see it, but they've left certain information in, which I think they shouldn't have. They should have blacked that out as well. So I've got to go through it all, and I'm going to do that tomorrow. And like I said, once I get my 
um, USB adapter thing that I can put on, plug into the side of my laptop. So then I've got my four USB ports. I can then still use my mic. And I can still use my mouse. And I can also get onto my USB thing and pull up the files. But the one file I've noticed, when I go on the site, I can read it. I can read it word for word. Right? And it's a big file. It's a 980 page file. Yeah? But as soon as I download it and then open the file, it shows nothing but a black screen. I'm going, okay. So what I'll do, I'll go download it and I'll just go try and redact it on there on my downloads. Go into my downloads and redact it that way. Because as soon as I... No, I can't download it because as soon as I download it, it'll give, just give me a blank screen. So I don't know what I can do about redacting on that one. I have to try and find a way where I can save it and not lose, and so that I'm still see it, still read it. Because I don't understand why it's not showing me the information. I've seen the information, so why it's not showing me when I download it, I don't know. So we'll be going over that as well, because then, if you've been following this case, and you've been listening to all these videos of the police interviews, and everything, the body cam videos, where you hear them talking about this and that and everything, when we go through these files, you will see the lies, and you will spot, you will hear the lies in this one as well. I feel like getting hold of this woman and slapping the life out of her. I really do. Because as I've said in my profile pic, right? Can you even call her a mother? I can't. Any mother that can be as heartless as her, any mother, I'm talking about any mother, not just her, any mother that can literally turn a blind eye to what was going on in that home or hit a, uh, abuse a child or anything like that, I've got no respect for. I've got not one ounce of respect for that person. Anyway, so I'm going to see. I just need to make sure I'm... My lot of camera is moving. Let's just take this off, Minnie. So, yes, yes, it's working. Because earlier, it wasn't working when I did a video. Yes, was it this morning? Yeah. I had to redo the video. The end of the video didn't record. So I had to redo it all. I'm thinking, oh, my Lord. So, here we go. We're going to watch this, and I will be stopping it. In, as we go along, I don't. I think she shows pictures on this as well, so I will let it run as it is. Okay, I won't put my picture up. But this is hold on. Credit goes to Grizzly to Crime. Her link is in the description. If you haven't already, please go over and subscribe to her. She has got. All the information on this case. She's got all the pictures from the bedrooms to the living room to the kitchen to the bathrooms. Every picture. Right, so if you're interested in seeing all the pictures, go over there. Go over and see. She's got it all on file, all listed for you, and she does even timestamp it. So if you want to miss something and you just want to go to see the pictures, you can miss all that and just go to straight to the pictures and things like that. Right, so I've tried doing timestamp on my videos, on some of them, where I've been able to put timestamps in and it don't come up for me. 
Okay, where am I going wrong? So I look at other people's videos and their timestamps, how they do it, and I'm thinking, well, that's how I do my timestamps. That's how I set it out, just like that. But mine don't come up. Anyway, so I will timestamp this one as well, okay? And I'll even put in timestamps of certain areas that you might just want to pop to rather than listen to the whole interview. So I'll get my book out so I can get ready to make my notes. And if you're like me and you are following this case and you're taking notes, please do so. Because there's so much in this case. So, so much. All right, so please take notes. And if you find something or see something, that I don't pick up on, please feel free to contact me at crimeandjustice66 at gmail.com. That email is also in the description. So please feel free to contact me or message me. Leave me a message on YouTube. Leave me a comment. Right, so let's get going. Good morning. We are at the State Attorney's Office in Kissimmee. It's 8.57 a.m. It is April 18th, 2024. I am William Jay. I am the Division Chief for the Homicide Unit. With me is Danielle Pinnell, also from the Homicide Unit in Kissimmee. Can the detectives identify themselves? Detective Mark Morris. Detective Kyle Smallwood. And with us is... Jennifer Soto. With your attorney, Matthew Hughes-Bark. All right. We went over some things before we went on the record and told you had the opportunity to ask any questions that you need to ask. Um, if you need a break to consult with your attorney, that is absolutely fine. We'll all step out of the room, turn off our recorders and let you exercise your constitutional right to have counsel. There's no problem with that. There's water fountains here, there's restrooms. I don't know if you're a smoker or not, but like if you get desperate, we can make an outside break time, but we are kind of under time constraints. Um, with that all, I'd be okay as long as they gave me constant coffee. All said, would you raise your right hand, please? Do you swear or affirm to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Okay, thank you. Now, she was subpoenaed to come to this. She was subpoenaed to come to this meeting for this interview. All right. This is an investigative subpoena, so you've been compelled to be here. And in our country, under the Fifth Amendment and the Fourteenth Amendment, as applied to you under the Florida uh, Constitution as well, you cannot be forced to incriminate yourself. So anything you say today can't and won't be used against you unless you just don't tell us the truth. And I've already explained to your attorney, Mr. Bark, whether or not you've made any inconsistent statements in the past, that, that is dirt under the bridge. And either a misdemeanor was committed or it wasn't, but we're not going to be using that as, as a basis of some sort of perjury by false statements because you those other charges wouldn't be perjury anyway so what they're doing what they're saying is anything she has said in the past all those red flags we've signaled up all those different stories she's gave out i we and things like that no they don't care about that now they don't care they're not going after her for that Um, so the most important thing today is to tell the truth. I also explained derivative use immunity, which means if you said that there was a gun, and obviously there's no gun in this case, buried in your attorney's yard, we couldn't go dig up that gun if you told us that, oh yeah, there was the, the gun that was used is right there. We wouldn't be able to do that. We would have to show that we learned all those things independently from this interview. Okay? Do you have any questions? All right, so let's get started. Before you start, let me just make sure we're clear on the record. I had, off the record, we had discussed our position on the concerns we have. Ms. Soto was interrogated by law enforcement previously. Um, she was under a tremendous amount of duress and stress being that her child was missing and then she was informed, was found deceased. Um, there's been media hysteria about this. There's been people asking for her to be prosecuted, tarred, feathered, executed. Um, 
and so with that said, we have the concern that you brought up about um, if there's something said inconsistent today, not being used against her for filing a false police report. Um, right. So, for example, if she said something that was false then, and we have no idea that it was false now before this interview, but she comes in and admits that it was false today, we can't use these statements or that admission that it was false against her, just like we couldn't use anything else against her um, from this interview. Okay. Okay. So what they're saying is she can say what the hell she likes, they don't care. Basically. Right? Now, this is the deal her attorney has made with them. So, which I think is disgusting. No deal should be made. She, shouldn't, she should be hugged up on all. Oh, it's like they said, they're not even misdemeanors. Excuse me, did she not lie to the police under oath? Did she not make a, a false report of some sort? My understanding is that on February 25th of this year, you were working at uh, the hotel at, um, on Disney property out at Coronado Springs. Yeah. Uh, loud and loud enough to get caught on the report. I know you're upset. I know. Yes. All right. And did you get off at 10 p.m.? Yes. All right. Did you go directly home? Yes. About how long does it take you to get home? About 25 to 30 minutes. And when you get home, who is downstairs, if anybody? You have a two-story, is it a townhome? Is that the best word for it? Yes, it's a townhome. If anybody is downstairs, who is downstairs? I saw my daughter Madeline and uh, Stefan. Do you recall what Madeline was wearing? No. And do you recall? No, I'm sorry. If that was the last night I saw my child, and I'd gone missing the next day. That night, everything in that day up to her going to bed, everything would be drilled into my flipping head. What they was wearing, was it PJs, was it shorts, long, long leg pyjamas, you know what I mean? But she can't even remember that. What Stefan was wearing. When you get home from work, do you need to kind of eat a late dinner before you get settled in for bed? Yes. And do you eat there at your home? Yes. What do you eat? I think I had a, a pub sub waiting for me in the house, a sandwich. Okay. Did anybody join you in sitting down and eating? No, I ate in my bedroom. Right, now listen to that. She said, no, I ate at, in my bedroom. Right? Listen to that. Don't forget that. That's what he just said was, did anyone else sit down with you while you had your meal? She said, no, I ate in my bedroom. Okay. Did it look like anybody else had recently cooked food or eaten any food there that night? What I saw, no, I, no, I didn't see anyone cooking, or they didn't look like anyone had been cooking. Okay. Um, I believe in one of your former interviews, you mentioned that Madeline might have gone over with you kind of what she got at the birthday party since you didn't have the chance to go because you were at work. Mm -hmm. When and where does that occur? That occurs right after I get home. It occurs in my bedroom. Everyone's in my room. Um, and so by every. Right? Did you hear that? He asked her when she said I had a late evening meal. He said, did anyone sit with you while eating? She goes, no. I, eat in my, I ate in my bedroom. Who's in the bedroom with her? Madeline. Everyone, let's just be clear since I understand you have some roommates. So what do you mean by everyone? Okay. Uh <clears throat> Madeline, Stefan, and myself were in my bedroom. Okay. Right, Madeline and Stefan.
and herself was in the bedroom. Now, she was sitting there eating a uh, club sandwich or whatever it was she was eating, and she told him, no, she ate it in her bedroom. No one was with her. And yes, there was, Madeline and Stefan. Okay. At this point in time, do you recall what Madeline was wearing? I, I don't know. Let me ask it a different way. Can you tell me whether or not she was wearing a long sleeve green sweatshirt and jeans? Oh, no. Okay. Would she have kind of been in her bed gear or do you think she could have still been in the dress that she wore to her birthday celebration? She would have been in pajamas. I can't recall the exact pajamas, but she would have been in pajamas. Um, she, she had already, by this point in the evening, she had already showered and changed out of that birthday dress. And was it your understanding from your sister that she had gotten dropped off about 8.30, she being Madeline? 8.30, 8.45, something around that time, yeah. And what's your understanding as to when Stefan had gotten there? If you know, if you don't, don't guess, it's fine. Actually, while he's saying that this is important, so there's things that you might think should be a certain way because of, that's just the way things go. Um, but don't just guess based on past history that mm -hmm. it's the same as what happened on that particular day. If you don't know, you don't know. Then, yeah, I'm not sure exactly what time he, he got there. Okay. You were at work, so I just didn't know if, like, sometimes families check in, hey, I made it by text or by phone call or anything like that. You, do you not remember any of that? I don't remember. Okay. How long were the three of you in your bedroom? I'm going to say for about 30 minutes. Okay. Um, yeah. And did Madeline tell you about the party? No, she did, really happy. did she tell you what uh, food they had there at the party? Yeah, she um, they had her favorites. What are her favorites? Um, Puerto Rican food. So, arroz con gandules. All right, so you're going to have to translate to English. <laughs> I know frioles and arroz and a couple other things, but help me out. Um, if I recall correctly, she had requested rice. It's, it's a type of rice and beans. Mm -hmm. It's rice with pigeon peas. Okay. Uh, and beni, which is, I'm not sure how to, it's a, it's a pork, but I'm not sure how they cook it. Okay. Um, so, cooked pork. Um, that's typically what she requests for her parties. That's like her favorite meal. Okay. And what kind of gifts did she get? She got a lot of money. Okay. That's what she ended up showing me. I think she had a few trinkets, but like most of it was just a big wad of money that she was so excited for. All right. Yeah. Um, is there any particular reason Stefan couldn't uh, make it up to the party? Because it's my understanding he didn't exactly work or anything. Um. He wouldn't have been invited. Um, the party was held at my mom's house, and my mom and him have never had a great relationship. She's never liked him. So he wouldn't have been invited to the party at all. It just would have been my whole family, and then me. If I hadn't worked, I would have been there. Okay. Now, during this 30 minutes that the three of you are in your bedroom, is Madeline engaging in any of her kind of nighttime routine or, you know, getting ready for bed? What else is going on, if anything? Um, we spent a long, a long time talking about gifts and having her show me, and then we counted out her money. Um, I can't remember if she had finished with all of her bedtime routine. Okay. Does she brush her teeth at night? Uh, in the shower. In the shower? Okay. Uh -huh. And that occurred before you got home? Yeah. And my understanding with her nighttime medication is that's that's something that you would like to make sure she had bedtime or so? Something like that, yeah. So were you present for that occurring or did that occur after you got home? <clears throat> that that did not occur on my call. Um I believe I had instructed Maddie when she got home to go ahead and take them herself. Okay. And is that something that she's allowed to do? Um, from time to time, yeah. 
When you say they, is there what my understanding was there was some hydroxazine. Is there anything else he takes at night? Just hydroxazine. All right. And the Miralax is when? Miralax is. So that would have been earlier while you were at work too, if she took it? Yeah. May not have because she was at the party? Yeah, because she's been, because I had been training at work that week and we had been going back and forth with my mom's a lot, the Miralax wasn't consistent. Okay. All right. Now, Madeline, does she? I think, this is just my opinion, I think Madeline had been at her mom's since day Thursday night. Because she made a slip up in one of the interviews when I asked her when she last saw Madeline. And she said, Wednesday, 11 p.m. And then she went, oh no, sorry, Sunday, 11 p.m. So I'm thinking she was at the grounds from the Wednesday and was due to go home on a Saturday. She didn't want to go home. She was upset. She was crying. She did not want to go home. So she spent the day at the grand at her grandfather's, All right? But we don't know if she went back home after the grandfather's, or if she went back to her grands. That's still a sticky point, which we're going to find out one way or the other. She lay out her clothes for school the next day, or is that something she gets in the morning, makes a game time decision like my kid? Typically, it is a game time decision the morning of. Okay. What about this specific evening? Do you remember anything about it? Yes. This evening, we had, um, I had already discussed prior to Stefan coming to visit that he was going to help me take my to school that day. Um, so because I knew that that was what was going to happen that night, I had asked Maddie, pick out your clothes, have everything ready, have your backpack ready, your water bottle, everything you need ready so that that way you could just grab your stuff and head out. It won't be too much, too much of a hassle in the morning. Um, and so she did, she picked up her clothing. I asked her what she was wearing and she told, she told me what she, what she had picked out. I said, okay, fine. All right, so she picks it out, but does she physically take it out of somewhere wherever she stores her clothes and put it somewhere? I'm not sure. Okay. I'm so, not sure if she took that clothes upstairs with her or anything like that. All right, so as far, you didn't see them in your room and did you have the opportunity to kind of see her cubby part of the living room to see if she had put them in on her bed or anything like that? I hadn't seen them. Does Madeline um, have like a water bottle or a hydro flask or whatever the kids call it that she likes to sleep with and bring bring up bring up or bring wherever she's sleeping? Mm, typically not. That stays downstairs in her backpack and then she'll clean it in the morning and then fill it back up and Favorite stuffed animal or stuffed animals? Anything that always goes with her wherever she's sleeping? Uh, she does have a few stuffies and blankies. Um, did I see any that day? Yeah, specifically, did you see if she brought any of that stuff upstairs with her? Uh, no, I didn't see any of that stuff upstairs. Now, separate question. Generally, habitually, like your attorney was saying, there's a difference between specific memory. But generally, would she do that? I'm not saying that you saw it that night. Generally, would she do what? Bring Have stuffies and blankets and her favorite stuff. Uh, yes, uh, she typically would. So if Stefan says something like Maddie's building her nest and getting settled in, would that to you mean like her stuff is part of this nest? Or what do you think that would mean if you know? I'm not sure. Okay. Do you recall getting that text from Stefan that night that Maddie had settled into her nest for the night? I don't remember that text now. Okay. My understanding was that at some point you told them it was time to go to bed. Yeah. Do you recall about what time that was? Around 11 o'clock. So that's consistent with getting home at 1030, having this half hour discussion and eating your pub sub? Is that a yes? Yes. All right. Do they comply with your wishes to go upstairs when you say that at about 11 o'clock? Uh, yes, they do. Okay. Um, Is there any further communication between either you and Madeline or you and Stefan about, all right, kids, it's time to go to bed, anything like that? Or was that the last you had heard from either one of them that night? I 
I think at some point Stefan comes downstairs to use the restroom and then goes back upstairs, but I don't, after that, I don't recall interacting or saying anything, so. Okay. Right. Now, why would Stefan come downstairs to her room where her bathroom is to use her restroom? Surely there's one upstairs. You know what I mean? Because if they rent that room out, say there was someone else who was renting that room, they don't want to have to be coming downstairs to go in Jen's room to use her bathroom. They want a separate bathroom. So surely there must have been a bathroom, a rest, or as some people in the USA call it, a restroom, or it's a bathroom, because it's got a bath in. Right. Uh, surely there'd be one upstairs. And my understanding is that you had some sort of parental controls over Maddie's phone. Is that accurate? sure by parental controls exactly i didn't have any limits or anything on the phone set up well like for instance if she wanted to install game pigeon does that um, have to go through you yeah 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 so any permissions for any apps you would have to ask me for all right and does that ring a bell as to occurring that sunday game pigeon okay all right so that's a, that's <laughs> the last time you hear from either one of them until the morning, my understanding is that Stefan comes down and is dealing with your dog. Is yeah. there, so is there any communication other than perhaps Stefan coming down to use the restroom? Um, is there any other communication that you have between Stefan and Matt? <laughs> do you see them? Now, I've, I've said communicate. Do you see them? Do you go up and check on them? Do you, do you see Madeline or Stefan from the point you kick them out at 11 p.m.? until you see Stefan at eight in the morning-ish is what you guess for the dog. Yeah, um, no, I didn't, I didn't see him. Okay. Now, when you go to sleep, do you sleep through the night or do you kind of <coughs> you wake up and not have consistent good sleep? I sleep through the night. Okay. So there wouldn't be any points in time where you get up. Take note of that. She sleeps. When she goes to sleep, she's dead to the world. She sleeps. The However, she said, she's not the long said that Stefan had come downstairs to use the restroom, the bathroom, which is in her bedroom. If you go over to Grizzly True Crimes, you'll see Jen's bedroom and you'll see that the she's got an ensuite. So, if it knocks, if she's out for the count, how would she hear him coming into the bedroom? Up and you're taking steps or just checking on your phone because you can't go back to sleep. As far as you remember, when you go to sleep, you're out until the dog thing in the morning. Did you hear or see anything during those hours um, involving Stefan or, or Madeline? I didn't hear or see All right, what's the first thing you remember when you wake up after having gone to sleep? I wake up to Stefan trying to put the leash on the dog. Okay. Now, is this the first time that you've ever woken up to Stefan trying to put a leash on your dog, or is that something that has occurred before in the past? I'm going to say this is the first time. Um, it's not normal for any of us to put the leash on the dog on the bed because if he's on top of any like bed, couch, anything, he'll pee. He gets really nervous. You have to do it on the floor. So I found it really weird that he did that. But All right. So let me ask it a little more broadly. Is this the first time Stefan's ever come into your room while you're sleeping to take the dog out for you in the morning? Um, I can't recall. Okay. Did you find it unusual then, or what did you think when this is occurring? When it happened, 
think I was more, I found it off, but I was more worried over the dog. I was like, please don't pee on the bed. I don't want to do laundry. Okay. Um, so I was more anxious over that. Um, he put the dog on the leash and told me to lay down and go back to sleep. And okay. I said, okay. So were you not laying down when he tells you to go back and lay down? No, when when he got when he put the leash on the dog, I shot up off the bed because I was going to help him. I was like, no, no, let me do it. And he's like, no, no, go back to sleep. I'm fine. I got this. Okay. I said, okay. Now, do you go back to sleep or do you check your phone or do anything? I think I go back to sleep. I can't look at anything. In this period of time that you have been awoken by Stefan, do you hear or see anybody else in your household? I hear somebody in the kitchen. Um, I'm not sure who it was. I'm not sure who it was. Okay. Could you identify it by size, like their steps? Could you identify gender by their voice? Anything like that? All I heard was sounds of like cabinets shutting, like somebody in there shutting, like looking for something and shutting. Okay. Um, now, if your daughter had been awake, would she come in and say goodbye to you before school or not? Just let you sleep. I would have hoped she would have come by and say <laughs> goodbye to me. Um, I can't remember if this is one of the first times that Stefan actually took her to school. So I. I would have hoped she would have said good, okay. good night, but I'm not sure. All right. So do you fall back asleep? I do. And when do you wake up and how do you wake up? I wake up at like nine o'clock in the morning uh, to my alarm. Um, yeah, I wake up at nine o'clock in the morning to my alarm. Uh, I get ready. I think at around 9.30, 9.45, I leave for my doctor's appointment. Okay. So in this period of time from when you're waking up and getting ready, do you see anybody else in your home? At this point, I'm not too sure. I know throughout the day, I've seen my roommate in the kitchen cooking and doing her like I've said so many times before, and I will keep saying it, that Sunday night, <coughs> pardon me, that Sunday night, and that Monday morning, when I heard movement in the kitchen, like cupboard door shutting or footsteps, right, would be drilled into my freaking head. So, what's annoying me is the fact that she's lied so many times, and they're going to let that go, because this is what her attorneys worked out with them. You know what I mean? That's what's so annoying. Thing, but I don't recall if I, it was at this time. <clears throat> Did you see your daughter this morning on the 26th? Did you have any texts or phone calls or any other type of communication through any possible app uh, on your phone? Like, hey, mom, love you at school, whatever. Any communications from Madeline? Anything from her? Nothing. All right. How about from Stefan, by the time that you wake up at 9, any texts or communication from him? Maddie's dropped. I'm off to the game store or whatever he's doing. No. Um... I didn't hear back from Stefan until 10, like 10, 20 ish. And he had told me he left his phone at home that whole morning by accident. And I had asked him how the morning went, how was Maddie? And he let me know that this morning went great. We made great time. She got busy super quick. 
Uh, he was going to take her to McDonald's for breakfast, but she changed her mind. All she wanted to do was sleep in the car, so he let her sleep. He took her to school and dropped her off, or he said he dropped her off, and that that was it. And you had a 10-15 appointment for a blood draw? Yes. And did you go anywhere else prior to getting to your appointment for your blood draw? Did you go directly there or not directly there? That's basically the question. Oh, I went directly there. All right. And after your blood draw, did you go directly back home? Yes. About what time did you get home? Sometime between 11.15 and 11.30. Did you have any other appointments or doctor's appointments later in the day? I was supposed to have had one, but I canceled it. When did you cancel it? That same day. Why did you cancel it? Because it was a $350 a Botox appointment that I didn't want to spend the money on. I, I changed my mind last second. Okay. When you get home from your blood draw appointment, is there anybody else at your home? Um, when I get home from blood draw, yes, uh, Stefan was home. All right. And can you describe what he's wearing, what he's doing, his demeanor, what's going on? I can't recall what he's wearing. It might be a red shirt with a graphic on it. Okay. Remember that? Red shirt. He was wearing a red shirt with some graphic. Uh, right? Because in the photos, it shows a red shirt in the drawer. But when we listen to those police interviews again tomorrow, <coughs> you'll hear him say, I haven't washed, I haven't showered, I haven't changed, I haven't eaten. You know what I mean? Since Monday, I've watched, oh God, since the day that Maggie went missing. He had changed. He changed from a red shirt to a blue shirt. <coughs> Pardon me. Which you then see in his bedroom, right up in room four, sitting on the side unit, on a side unit. He's sitting in my bedroom on my desk. Prior to you getting there, he's in your room, or is that where you guys go to talk? That he was hanging out there in my room. Okay. Um, my room is kind of like the general hangout spot. Okay. Um, I walk into my room. He's sitting there on the computer chair. Um, he's talking, acting normal, uh, asking about the morning and how everything went, and that he let me know the errands that he ran that morning or what he was up to. And what did he say he was up to? He said he had dropped Maddie off at school and then afterwards went to a vape shop so he can buy vaping things. Okay. But that the store wasn't open, so he waited a long time for them to open. They never did. So he drove around, killed time, and then eventually made it back to my house at like 1020. Um, when later on, while he was, when I got home and he was home, we started discussing, um, he started telling me that he was going to go back out to run a few more errands in a little bit down 182. And he gave me the name of a few stores that he might stop at. I'm like, okay. Um, I asked him if he wanted to meet me at my house by 2.30 so that we can go pick up Maddie from school together. And he said, yeah, uh, he'll, he'll be back by 2.30. I said, okay. So was that the plan to get her together or was it ever discussed that he would get her alone? The plan was for, for us to get her together. Okay. All right. And so does he leave before you leave? Uh, actually before this, while we were still discussing, while we were having the conversation on the, in my room, he did mention at one point, Oh, uh, while well, he was sitting there, that he had to reboot his phone 
or that he had to update his phone. Mm -hmm. um, and what was it? He had to update his phone. So I said, I told him, stop avoiding and do it. Like it's a updates take a while. Like do it. And while he was updating his phone, he said, I don't know what I did, but I just uh, factory reset my phone. Mm -hmm. And I said, that's weird. I didn't know that you could do that. He said, yeah, a button popped up and I pressed it and it just reset my entire phone. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't see phone. It doesn't. You have to go into your settings and click on reset or whatever it is you click on and then say, It'll pop up with, are you sure you want to, yes, so you hit yes, are you, this, by carrying on with this action, your phone will be wiped clean or whatever it says, Do, are you sure, and you, you go yes or no, yes, so you are prompted, you cannot, it does not just pop up on your phone, it doesn't. Oh, that sucks. Um, so, what, does he leave before you do to go do these errands he was telling you about? Yes, he does uh, leave. Do you stay at home until it's time to go get Madeline? Yes. Do you hear uh, anything from Stefan while he's out doing these errands? Uh, no. So, 2.30 rolls around. Is Stefan back home yet? No. At this point, I leave. Do you call, try and call him or text him or communicate with him? Yeah, I had been calling him like maybe starting 15 minutes before I was supposed to leave just to see where he was. Did he answer? No. Um, I leave at 2.30. Around 10 minutes later, I get a phone call from him. And he said, I'm so sorry. I left my phone at home again on accident. Um, I was driving down 192 and my tire exploded or shredded and I had to pull over into one of the plazas and change my tire. Um, I hurt. He said he hurt his thumb doing that. Okay. And that, um, yeah, he was late and didn't make it back on time for that reason. All right. When you leave to go pick Madeline up at 2.30, do you take her phone with you? I do. And how is it that you come to get her phone to go with you? Um, at some point in the morning, I was organizing and putting things away, and I walked into her bedroom, and I saw her phone on her dresser. And I just assumed, oh, she must have left it here while getting dressed and forgot it. That's funny how her phone was on her dresser. Because in the records, it shows her phone, right, because I didn't realise you could do this, because it just came up on my phone today, and I'm thinking, oh, I've got a, a map, a destination thing coming up, thinking it was a delivery tube, so I clicked on it, and it was Google Maps, Google, and it was telling me everywhere I've been, how long I'd walked, how long I'd ro rode a bike, which is zero, but it was telling me something else, how long I'd done this, how long I've done that, so I thought that's a load of crap, because I haven't rode a bike, I haven't been on a bus anywhere in nearly two weeks, you know what I mean, so I'm thinking, no, so it also, mon so I know it monitors, when you move and you carry your phone, it takes, monitors your steps, and it monitored that Madeline's phone and Madeline's phone took 31 steps on the night time after 11 p.m. After 11 p.m., that phone moved, took 31 steps. And it said 31 steps and up one flight. So it knew it had gone up a flight as well. So if, if she took her phone upstairs, or oh, he took her phone. Why is her phone back downstairs again? Because, oh yeah, he brought his phone, her phone back down again. Okay. Was it on? Yes. And 
sometimes when you bump or move phones, the notification screen comes up. Mm -hmm. Did you happen to do that? And did you see if there was any incoming notifications that she had missed? I haven't seen any. Okay. All right. So you go to school and due to time constraints, like an NFL football game, we're going to kind of jump ahead a little bit. My understanding is that you want to be first in line mm -hmm. and you have to get there early to do that. And I understand that. Yeah. She, does, she doesn't come out. She doesn't come out. Did you call her phone? I did. Why did you do that? Because I forgot I had had it with me. I was like, where is she? Why isn't she out yet? So I start calling her phone and then I start realizing I'm hearing vibrating. And then I look down and I see her phone's with me. I'm like, oh, okay. how am I going to get a hold of her? Because I'm the first in line. The car's behind me. All how can you forget you had your daughter's phone on you? You picked it up and you stated before, whenever she's left her phone at home before, you take her phone with you to give to her for on the drive home. Already have children, they're full, they're waiting for me to leave. Okay. All right. So I'm going to kind of jump ahead. Did Madeline ever complain to you about? believing that Stefan had taken her Christmas money? Yes. Tell me about that. Christmas money went missing. And we were both, um, it, I was, I, I don't even know how to explain this. We have collected all of her envelopes with Christmas money and consolidated it into one. I'll put all her money into one. Yeah. And then I said, I will put this somewhere safe. And I thought I had put it in my nightstand. A few days later comes Ryan, comes around, whatever. Um, we start looking for it or asking for it or something like that. And we can't find it. We can't find it at all. Um, so let me just narrow it down. Did she accuse Stefan of taking it? I'm not sure if she did directly. I, we, we, we both had the suspicion, but we're like, no, could he have? No, I don't think so. But I eventually found that money. Okay. I was just going to have it from history end. All right. So you had just started this job at Disney Coronado Springs like a week or two earlier. Is that right? Yes. And your sister and other family members would help with Maddie getting to school because of your job? Uh, yes. My mom. My mom and my sister, yes. Okay. Why is it that now Stefan on February 26th is coming up to help as opposed to any of your family members helping getting Madeline to school? Uh, I had asked for him to come and help me because I think I was working a lot of night, night shifts or like really late shifts. And um, I just wanted the opportunity to see Maddie like, because. I wanted to spend more time with my daughter throughout the week while I was working uh, versus had she had stayed at my mom's, I wouldn't have seen her all week. Okay. Um, so that was just me wanting to see her and spend time with her. Did Madeline, Madeline stay at your mom's house fairly frequently? Every few weekends here and there, like just for the weekend kind of thing. So like if she described it to her friends as like her second home and like kind of offer up it's better, better jacuzzi and pool, does that sound like that's the place? Yes. Where does Madeline sleep when she's over at your mom's? She will sleep in bed with my mom. Okay. Did she ever have sleepovers? Like have friends come over and sleep over? This is not wrong. Slumber parties, no. Did she ever go and attend any? No. Is there any particular reason? I mean, she's a 12 year old girl on the cusp of being 13. Yeah, I. I've been very uncomfortable with sleepovers just because I know what can happen. Anything can happen in a sleepover. Well, then you can be the host house like we kind of were. You never hosted any sleepovers for her friends? For her friends, no. Did she ask about it? Yeah, she did ask. Why? She didn't want her daughter going to her friend's house for a sleepover because she didn't know father, the brothers, or anyone. But it's all right to have your daughter sleep at home in a bed with a grown man. Okay? Okay, I've just got a bit... Ugh. Then, 
because that just infuriates me. Hey, she wouldn't let her go to a friend's sleepover. And to be honest with you, I'm quite surprised she wanted to sleep over at her mum's. Because where are they going to sleep? Where are they going to sleep? Right? I wouldn't want my friend seeing where where my bed was, if, if that was my bedroom. You know what I mean? I wouldn't. Was it probably a source of contention or arguments? Uh, it was, I guess what was the source of argument was her and she wanted to really sleep over her best friend's house. And I was just, I just kept saying, no, 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 you never know what could happen. I don't know the dad. I don't know the brother. I don't know anybody that like, I, I don't know what could happen to you. So, um, I'm just afraid of her getting assaulted. Okay. Um, Did Madeline do her own laundry? Just afraid of her getting assaulted. Okay, Jen. Once again, you let her sleep in a, a bed with a grown man. And by the way, Jen, in all these interviews you gave, you've given, you kept referring to him as your partner, as your boyfriend, as your whatever. He wasn't. You split up in 2022. Right, but for the and then for six months, you just played a like, well, we don't want to tell Maggie because we don't know she, or how upset she's going to be. So for six months, you just played along with it, but then Maggie clicked on, so then you had to tell her. And it was shortly after that, then that Stefan moved up to room four, right, and Oh, God, I can't. It, she just gets me so mad. Did she cook for herself? I was teaching her how to make a few things. So, I mean, yeah, she could, I guess. Okay. What's her normal routine for getting ready for bed? Um, we give her her meds. Um. I'm sorry, take your time. We get ready for bed. I'd give her her medication. Um, she would get in the shower. Uh, Take a long shower, I, I understand. Like an hour plus, yeah. Okay. Um, she loved it. Um, yeah, anything to get, get away from that creep. I'd spend all day in a flipping shower if I had a creep like that living in my home. She'd get out. Uh, she'd get dressed. She'd let her hair towel dry for a while, and then she would brush it. We would watch some TV. She'd probably have a snack before bed as well. Okay. What what were kind of her nighttime uniforms? I mean, everybody kind of has their pajamas, but they're not necessarily pajamas. What was her routine nightwear? Uh, she really liked wearing uh, shorts. So she had a few pajama outfits, uh, but she really like wearing shorts and uh, baggy t-shirts. Okay. How about uh, her routine getting ready for school in the morning? What's that about? Um, <clears throat> we'd wake up. The alarm would start ringing around 7.30. We'd snooze it up until 8 o'clock. Then she'd get up. Um, She'd get dressed, and then she'd lay back down in bed while she would wait for me to make her breakfast. So she would. She's a breakfast eater. Yeah. Okay. Uh, she'd have breakfast. Then she would start, you know, with um, brushing her hair, brushing her teeth, putting on makeup. Well, actually, she liked breakfasts. She liked to have a breakfast. So, apparently, this McDonald's trip was like a birthday breakfast for her on Stefan, for, by Stefan. Right, that's what like, the story is. That Stefan wanted to treat to a McDonald's breakfast. 
right? So, if you've got a young girl that likes to eat breakfast, I can't see her saying, no, don't I go to McDonald's? You know what I mean for the breakfast there? I don't like the breakfasts at McDonald's. I don't, or Burger King, no. I'm not a breakfast person. I tend to eat, have something to eat about 11 a.m. after I've got up. But I'm not, I've never been a breakfast person, never. Even when I was younger, I was never a breakfast person. The only thing I do like to eat, which is a cereal, and it's, we use, I used to know it as sugar puffs. No, it's just puffs. Puffs. Sugar puffs. And I sit there like it's popcorn, and I'll eat it straight out of the box. No milk, just put a hand in, grab a handful, and in your mouth. But, no, I'm not a morning breakfast person for breakfast. I never have been. But a young girl who likes breakfast, it's weird that she would, oh, I don't want to go to McDonald's now. I would give her her ADHD medications for school. Is that every day or just school days? Um, so it sounds like you're heading out like 8.45 or 9? Yes. And it takes like, what did you say, 15, 20 minutes to get to school? Yes. The first bell's 938? 920. Like 920, okay. yeah. So on Monday the 26th, 7.30 seems like a really early time to depart to go to middle school, even if you're getting Mickey D's. What was the discussion about when Stefan and Madeline were going to leave on the 26th? There wasn't one. So you didn't know anything about these plans, or did you? Or I knew that they were going to go to McDonald's, but not 7 o'clock in the morning. That wasn't. Okay. I had assumed like eight o'clock, um, um, but even then, eight o'clock is kind of early, like eight eight thirty. Because you could just go to McDonald's, be done by nine, and then drop her off at school. But McDonald's is right is a block away from the school, so I. And Madeline's not driving, so she can eat while she's riding. Yeah, so I don't. And she takes about an hour to get ready in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So if they were leaving at seven thirty, you, you'd think she'd have to get up at six thirty to get ready and go through a routine, right? Yeah, it's extremely early. Okay. And is that what Stefan told you after this these events unfolded? Was that he, they left at early, like seven thirty? What did he ever tell you? It was early. I can't remember the time. I think I dropped her off uh, in uh, front of her school sometime between eight fifteen and eight forty five. You say I? What do you mean by that? Did you drop her off that no, morning? No, I'm speaking. Sorry. Um, okay. Uh, as was Stefan was telling me. Stefan let me know that he dropped her off sometime between 8.15 and 8.45 uh, on the road by the church close to her school. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking him, why so early? That's too early. School doesn't start until 9.30. Why did you drop her off that early? Oh, I don't know. We just left the house and made the time. I wasn't paying attention to the clock. Okay. Did Madeline ever have like effects from taking the hydroxyzine in the morning? Like still be kind of sluggish? Yes. How often would that occur? Was that like every morning or not every morning? Not every morning. Um, if we happen to give her her medication later than normal and routine, that would happen. But. Um... Okay. And were there ever any instances where she had taken too much of the medicine? Perhaps you and Stefan had given her medicine? Well, apparently, she stopped taking. She stopped taking that medicine, the morning medicine, right? On February the 14th, she said to her friends she feels much better without it. You know what I mean? She feels a lot better. Not, not knowing that the other person had? Yes. That's happened once before. Um, just once or more? I want to say once. Okay. Um, were you taking medicinal marijuana in pill form at any point for THC? Yes. And what do those pills or tablets or capsules look like? They're purple capsules. Did you ever suspect or confront Stefan about um, 
giving those medications to Madeline? No. So d during this incident where um, Madeline had been double dosed with hydroxyzine, do, do you recall any conversation you had with Stefan and inquiring as to whether or not he had accidentally given her any of your THC? That hadn't occurred to me. I, I had asked him the day that, the one morning I wouldn't wake up and, and get ready for school and she was just out of it. I thought it was, I assumed it was medication related. But I didn't realize, I'm like, did this one medication hit her too hard because we gave it to her late? I called poison control. Mm -hmm. I needed to see what would happen. Because at this point, I think I had gotten Stefan to admit that he gave her a second dose of the sleeping meds as well because he thought I had given it to her in the first place. Okay. Um, but that was with hydroxyzine. Excuse me? He gave her a second dose as well because he thought you hadn't given her. Well, what's wrong with him asking you, sending you a message, phoning you? Did you take, give Mag, Mag, uh, Magdalene her medicine today? Did you give Magdalene her medicine tonight? Simple. Just ask. That's all he had to do. But oh no. And in some of the photos, it stated that it looked like Madeline was sleeping. I didn't know anything about THC, the marijuana. I'm just asking you. Oh. Um, I'm asking if you remember having that conversation. There is a conversation on your phone about you You were relaying that Madeline said that she suspected that it was different, bigger pills, and you relayed that to Stefan and had a conversation with him. And if you don't remember it because it was a year ago, that's fine. Um, my next question is, um, you have two female roommates? Yes. And one of them has a child, a son that sleeps part-time over there? Yes. And so my understanding is they're kind of, it's like a, I don't know what to call it, like a bed and breakfast? There's numbers on the doors upstairs? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I just, to make it easier for the roommates, I just labeled each bedroom. So they're in two and three. Mm, yes. All right. Now, bedroom number four. At one point, you told the police that your sister was staying with you, and that's why um, the sleeping arrangements were as they were. Was your sister ever staying with you, or did I misunderstand what you said? No, no, my sister wasn't staying with me. Okay. Um. <clears throat> so let me uh, ask you this. Um, at what point did Madeline's bedroom kind of become the living room? When did that setup start? Uh, I think as soon as a few months into us moving back into that ha townhouse. And um, when would that have been? Let's say June of... Sometime in 2020. Look, I can remember when I moved into my place back in 2022. Yeah. And I know what month it was. And I know what date it was. It was four days before my birthday in March. 2022. Too, but I'm not sure when. Okay. It's my understanding that it's December of 2022 that you and Stefan kind of break up. Yes. But he still remains in the townhome. Yes. Why is that? So even though you're we broken up, I still consider him one of my best friends. Um, I wanted to give him the opportunity to live there and he, he had just, he had gotten a job at Disney that was doing well. Okay. And I didn't want him to continue to lose that because he had been struggling for a long time to get a job or do anything. 
his own mental health issues. Okay. So I just wanted to give him a chance to like do something, be be something. So um, did he pay rent? Yes. How much rent did he pay? Uh, Six hundred bucks a month. Right. Sorry. No footsies. Um, <laughs> like all the way. So in December of 2022, kind of when the breakup happens, prior to that, what were the sleeping arrangements in your home? Was he sleeping in your bedroom as a couple? Yes. So who's in bedroom number four, uh, if anybody? No one. I think that room remained empty for a while. For a little bit, there was another roommate there, but uh, it remained empty for the most part. Um, and were your female roommates already there in two and three? Yes. Why doesn't Madeline have that bedroom four? I wanted her to have bedroom four, but my dad really wanted rent. Um, that, that whole unit that I live in is owned by my father. Okay. So let me ask you this. Do you pay your father anything to live there, or does he just... I can't see her father, the grandfather, to Madeline. So no, she can't have that bedroom. I want to rent it out. I can't see that. It's his granddaughter. Of course, he, I'm sure he'd wanted to have her own bedroom. I'm sure he would. You know what I mean? If I had, like, I'm in a big, biggish place compared to some places where I live. Right, and I've got two bedrooms. And the one I use for my grandkids. Right. Well, say I had, say I had a three-bedroom place. Well, no, a two-bedroom place like I've got, right? And say it was, I was renting it off my dad, right? I'd be going, and my, my son or my daughter could sleep in that bedroom. And if he goes, well, I want to rent that room out, I'd be going, no, I'm paying you rent out. But she was only paying $400 a month. So it all come down to money. Right? Rather than fight for a, fa a father and say, look, this is your granddaughter. Let her have a bedroom. She's got no bedroom. She's got nowhere where she can go and just sit on her own. And listen to her music. Talk to her friends. Do her homework. In peace and quiet, you know what I mean? She's got nowhere. handle the collecting the rent from your rentees, yeah, lessees, no. whatever they are? Uh, I, I pay him rent as well. Okay. What, what, what do you pay for the rent? My portion of the rent was $400 a month. All right. And what do the two female roommates pay? $850 and $650. Okay. Prior to Madeline, um, having her own bedroom set up in the living room, where was she sleeping in that town home? Uh, in... In my bed with me. Okay. And this is during a time frame when you were together with Stefan, so is it the three of you every night? Well, we, when we had first moved in, it was just me and Maddie. So it was just me and her on the bed. Then I think we eventually got her her own bedroom. Um, Stefan moves in eventually, and then, yeah, th at that point, it does become the three of us on the bed. Okay. So Madeline's 12, and she has her own bedroom, and how often does she sleep in her own bed alone? Hardly. She doesn't like sleeping alone, and she doesn't like the living room. It's too big, too quiet. She says it would be too dark, and then there would be spiders. She would see spiders, so... Um, so you say hardly. Were there ever nights where she just slept alone in her bed? Or was it 100%? Because there's a difference between hardly ever and 100% to me. If she ever slept on that bed, it was like once. Okay. All right. So now you've broken up with Stefan in December of 2022, right? Mm -hmm. um, he's still paying rent, and he's there full time in bedroom number four. Is that where he goes after you break up? No, he stayed in my room for a few months. Um, we've broken up, but we weren't sure how to discuss it, discuss it with Maddie because it was the beginning, it was the middle of the school year, and I didn't want to 
affect her in any way. Mm -hmm. uh, so we just played it off, um, acted like everything was normal and fine for the first six months. And then eventually she caught on. And then once she did, we admitted to her that we were broken up. And then, um, yeah, at that point is when he moved up to bedroom four. Okay. And once he moved up to bedroom four, were there instances where Madeline would sleep alone upstairs with him? I'm going to say... I want you to think carefully before you answer because obviously we've gone through your phone and we've seen all the conversations that you've had with Stefan. So it's clear that that's occurring. So I'm giving you the chance to answer the question. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out how many times it's happened. Okay. Why are you allowing that to occur? Good question. I saw Stefan as someone that I completely trusted with my life, my child's life. Um, I thought he had cared for her as a father would have been in. How long was you? Shame on you, Jen. Shame. Right? You sent your daughter up them stairs with him to bedroom number four. Where in that bedroom, there's a camera stand. One of them stands you put your phone on or camera on. There's all this sexual stuff, which I don't want to go into. I'm not approved, but for a 13 year old girl to be seeing all that stuff, it's not right. And to top it off, Oh, yes, just to top it off, put the cherry on top of the cake. A flipping gun with magazines with the bullets. You know what I mean? G-U-N, sorry, I can't say that word. A G-U-N. In her life for more than half of it, I playing the father role. Um... I thought he cared for her the way I did. I... Oh, he did care for her. He was obsessed with her. He was obsessed. He would do anything to come and see you so he could get back in with poor little Maddie. You know what I mean? Now, does there come a point in time in 2023 where you've kind of had enough of roommate ex-boyfriend Stefan and ask him to hit the road? Yes. And we'll, the, is that fair to say it was like October? Maybe, yeah, like the end of October, because then, then I gave him all of November and told him he had to be out by December 1st kind of thing. But yeah, that sounds about right. And then did you kind of ask him to leave a month earlier and it was a source of arguments? Uh, yes. Well, that isn't what his, his daddy was saying. His father said he wanted Stefan out of there and back at theirs, not because they're controlling, because they couldn't afford to pay the £600 a month on that room. They couldn't afford it. So... He moved out and they said, in the interview, and I'm going to get little clips cut off it, right? Um, in the interview, it says, when did you get, when did he leave or when did he move out? And the father said, the end of November, because I didn't want him going into December because it would meant paying another £600. So, yeah, he gave his notice in October. 
it probably already had to pay like six hundred pounds in advance, so he got in the October, so he got the November because that's already been paid for. His dad wanted him out in the by the end of November, so he didn't have to pay any more rent. Okay. So now at this point in time when he's being asked to leave, have you had any conversation with Maddie that Mommy isn't together with Stefan anymore, and this is kind of the ways of the world. Do you have that conversation with her? Uh, she had, by June, um, she figured it out already, so she knew we weren't together or anything like that. Um, so she, by December, yeah, she had already known he was leaving, and okay. but that was okay. Why is he coming back to visit after he's out? We're still friendly with each other at this point. Christmas is coming up. And we wanted to spend Christmas together. So he comes up for a few days during Christmas. And then he does visit a few more times after that, but for the day. And it's to pick up packages. He keeps getting mail delivered to my house, packages. So he just comes up and picks them up. And when he comes to visit after he's been kind of kicked out, is he paying rent or how is this working? Or is he just coming to visit? He's just coming to visit. Is your father making any uh, arrangements to rent bedroom number four? Because this is his income that he's losing. Uh, yeah, we have had it. We, we have had like an ad. Um, posted to see if we can get any renters. Uh, so we were trying to rent it out, but then we had to stop. And what happens if you ended up renting room number four? Is Stefan gonna still come up and visit you and sleep in your bed? I don't know, I hadn't even thought of it at that point. At one point you told investigators that Stefan was quote unquote stuck down there until they could afford for him to come back. Were there plans for him to come back? We had discussed him coming back and living with me. We weren't sure if temporarily or like for me to help him out with the place for a little bit before he can find his own place and move out. Or we were also considering talking about living together as like a companionship. Um, I think with my best friend who's helping me out with my child. Selfish. All you thought about, Jen, was you. Companionship. You. Having help with your daughter. You. Selfish. Because you, you told investigators that a lot of the reason your re relationship fizzled off with St Stefan was that your antidepressants. You, you had moved on to other people, had you not? Yes. And so despite having moved on with other people, you were still having Stefan come up and visit and there were plans to cohabitate with him again, potentially. Possibly, yes. Why? Why, if you'd moved on, right, which meant you were seeing other guys, yeah? Why would you want him back in your home? Why? That doesn't make sense, Jen. I don't care if you say, oh, well, he'd come back to help with Madeline. Madeline's 13 years old. You had a mother. You had a father. You had a sister who was all willing and able to help. So why? Selfish. Maddie had the opportunity to go visit her biological father in the fall out in Texas. Is that a yes? Yes. All right. Do you remember texting the biological father, hope nobody touches Maddie or tries shit or films her under the bathroom? Do you remember sending that text? No. Oh, well, do we 
um, I'm hearing a lot about this Stefan Stearns. Apparently, he'd been putting his phone under the bathroom doors and filming some of their housemates and things like that. Yep. Orange County Sheriff's Office back in February? Because that seems like a very oddly specific thing to text the father. So you didn't know anything about what was going on filming underneath bathroom doors? No idea. I don't know why I would have texted him. Okay. June 16th of last year, about 9.30 p.m. Oh, actually, I, I can't actually think back to that. Okay. What? Um, I think around the time that Maddie was going to fly out to Houston, mm -hmm. there had been an airline person that had gone into the bathroom and placed their camera on the toilet mm -hmm. to film. Um, and I remember thinking, I don't want Maddie, I'm afraid of Maddie being alone on the plane because what if an attendant does that to her? I said, hold on, let me pick something in the bathroom. And in reality, they're setting up a camera because this did happen to a girl. Okay. So um, I want to say it may have been concerns over that. Okay. Now, June 16th of last year at 9.30 p.m. and 27 seconds, you texted Stefan this, Maddie's no longer sleeping with me. I can't risk it. What does that mean? I have no idea. I can't risk it. That is weird. Something weird to say. Maddie's no longer sleeping with me. I can't risk it. Risk what? Risk what? How often was Maddie sleeping with you? Often, all the time. Uh, well, you keep on saying often versus all the time. Was it a hundred percent of the time or not a hundred percent of the time? If she wasn't, if she wasn't with my mom and she was with me, then yeah, she was sleeping with me. Okay. And if she's at mom, she's 100% of the time sleeping with mom? With, Your mom? Mom, with my mom, or she does have her own room, I guess. Like, a, a, there's another spare room she could use, but for, for the most part, she prefers to sleep with my mom. Okay. Um, now, my understanding is that you had some sort of period tracker that you kept track of Madeline's period with? I had a calendar app that calendar I, would write, app. I would write what days she would get her period, yeah. And obviously, Madeline doesn't have a job, so she's not going out and buying the products that she would need if she had her period, right? Mm -hmm. You would have to do that for her? Mm -hmm. Is that a yes? Yes. So do you remember her using any of those products um, at all in February? Because I assume you take the trash out, or does she take the trash out, or how does all this work? I take the trash out. Um, in February, no, I didn't notice her using any of her feminine hygiene products. Did you have any conversations with her about that? Uh, no, but I didn't notice until after everything. Because like, it would have been due like at the beginning of February. And this all happens at the end of February. So she's almost due again in March. So you never had any conversations with her about not having her period at the beginning? Mm. No, I mean, he's known, especially with young girls like her, your periods could be. Like, Auntie Flo could come whenever she felt like it. Yeah. So, it could be on and off. One, one month it could be on time. Next month it could be a week, two weeks later. But four, nearly four weeks later. I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you, if you ever had that problem where Auntie Flo will come like four weeks later than what it should have done. In February? No, there have been, she's had other periods that have been missed or like super late, so I just assumed this was going to be one of those situations again. Okay. Um, but no, I didn't. Um, did you ever discuss her periods or lack of periods with Stefan? I don't think so. Um, it's my understanding that... Well, Stefan seemed to know a lot about her auntie Flo. A lot. That Maddie had to take Miralax. I'm familiar with that myself because of my daughter when she was little. Um, so she had constipation issues? Yeah. 
Would it ever cause her discomfort, physical pain, bleeding? Um, yes. And how are you aware of that? Uh, she would tell me. Uh, there have been moments. So we've gone to we've gone to doctor's appointments. They run a lot of tests on her. They told me why her body is doing what it's doing. But um, she's shown me, like, she's shown me, like, uh, if there was blood or if she's in the bathroom and she just can't go, like, it's stuck. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she showed me that, too. So. Did she ever specifically seek treatment for tears or bleeding or anything due to her bowel movements? No, I don't think so. Tears or anything like that? No. Okay. I don't think there was ever a... a On February 26th, the whole purpose of Stefan coming and taking Madeline to school was so that you could get some sleep. You had missed your medication Saturday night, so on and so forth, right? Yes. Is there any particular reason Stefan couldn't have driven your car to take Madeline to school and therefore not embarrass her and he could just drop her off normally? Yes, but um, question. because he's on my car insurance, I was very nervous to let him drive my car. You did let him drive your car after this occurred though, right? Yes, but he was very insistent because he wanted to go look for Maddie and he had a, a spare on his car because he had a flat, so he couldn't drive his car. So he just really wanted to go out. So I just let him, but I wasn't comfortable with it. During your previous interviews, and you did it once today, you kind of interchanged I, we, or Stefan dropping Madeline off at school. Did you see Madeline at all on February 26th, 2024, that Monday? Yeah. Do you know anything about how she died? No. Did, did, did Stefan tell you anything about how she died? No. Did Stefan tell you about his plans to go back down to Northport in your car that Wednesday morning? Mm -hmm. Got any questions, Mark? <laughs> That's a long drive back down to Northport in a car that was not he was not insured in. That's a long drive. So if she didn't know, he's waiting for her to go to sleep and then he's got her car keys and left. And apparently I think let's say he left he got back at what Miss Tom was it? Half eleven? And he was gone six hours, so he left half eleven. Five. So he must have left about 5 a.m., 4.35 a.m. to do that trip. Right. So why did he go all the way back down there? I'm getting close. <clears throat> I'm going to jump through because I was making notes as we we're going on. So, how frequently did Stefan come up here after he moved back to Northport? I'm going to say how many times total do you think he came back here? Two to three times. Do you remember if those were around specific dates? One was like the week of Christmas. can't remember when the other one was. Was Stefan in town the week or two prior to this last time he came? I don't remember. It's possible, but I don't remember. Everything is becoming a blur. Do you remember sending him a text message asking if he can babysit Maddie while you go have lunch with your friend? This was a few weeks before. Mm -hmm. I remember, I remember going out a few weeks before. I don't remember asking him to babysit. I don't know where he was. Did you ever go to lunch with your friend and he babysat her? I, I did go to lunch with my friend, but I don't think he was, I don't think he was here. I think Maddie stayed home alone for a few hours. Okay. When you mentioned Maddie caught on about you guys being broke up, how did that, 
happened? What like what did she say or I forgot we were me and Stefan were having a conversation and she was like, Are you guys broken up? And we kind of look at her and we're like, Why are you asked? She goes, Because you guys are kind of acting like you're broken up. You guys haven't hugged and kissed in a long time. <laughs> How do you think she felt about that? Fine. She didn't sad or or happy or anything. I'd be over the flipping moon. I'd be yes. Get your bag. Get out. You're just like whatever. All right. Now you mentioned and you mentioned to me before too that you found her phone on her dresser in like her little bedroom area. Does she have a specific spot where she plugs in her phone to try? How does she charge her phone? Um, so on her side of my bed, um, she's got a, a long charger. She'll connect it there to charge. Um, don't know how she charged it that night though. Don't know if she took her charger and moved it to the room upstairs. Not sure. How do you charge your phone? I charge my phone with my charger next to me on my side of the bed. Okay, is it one that you plug in or? It's a magnetic one. Okay. Um, now, when you go to bed at night. They do say you shouldn't keep, like, recharge your phone until it's completely, nearly dead. Because it, that wounds kills the battery even more. So say you've got 30, 40 percent on your phone. Don't charge it until it gets down to like 10 percent, 5 percent. Me, be like me and just totally forget to put your phone on charge. Then the next morning you wake up and you wonder why your alarm hasn't gone off. Or you forget you haven't put it on charge and you're on a phone call to someone and then, oh, your phone's died on you. Because... You didn't put your phone on charge the night before. And you didn't check if your phone needed charging. So be like me. Is there any kind of routine that you do with your phone? If you're texting, look on TikTok or whatever, and you go to go to bed, you just set your phone down and go to sleep? Or what's that routine like? I'll TikTok until I start dozing off. And then I'll put my phone on the charger, make sure my alarm's on. And then I'll... Um, yeah, just lay down, close my eyes, and hope not to think of too much, just fall asleep. Okay, that night, Saturday, or Sunday night, when you guys, when spending this half hour of time together, was all you that you were doing was talking about gifts and counting her money, or were you guys doing anything else? Just asking her for more details about the party and to tell me, like, what I missed. She seemed like she had a really good time. When you got home from work that day, where were where was everybody? I think everyone was in my room, hanging out in my room. Okay, everybody meaning uh, Maddie and and Stefan were there. Okay. Sorry. All right. Um. Now it's obvious that you and Stefan communicate via text message and phone calls and stuff like that. What does Google Meet? What does Google Meet? That is like Google's version of FaceTime. So just face chatting. Okay. Uh, video chatting. Okay. Um, when the birthday party, when her birthday party was planned, was this planned before you got your job or after? The birthday party? Mm-hmm. Mm, I think it was planned before, because once I saw my schedule and I saw that I, it was during a training day, and I, mm -hmm. I, I wasn't going to call out. I considered re, rescheduling the party, but my family was insistent to just keep it that day. I said, okay. okay. Uh, all right, so <clears throat> Stefan moves out of his room, and... I think you mentioned that your dad had plans on renting that room again to somebody else. Is that right? Yeah. How was that room set up? How was Stefan's room set up after he moved out? Pretty much the, same. Or, pretty uh, much the same. The bed was in the same location, the okay. TV, uh, the TV, the dresser, 
the desk and the mini fridge, everything stayed in the same location. Okay, was the bed and did it have comforter, blankets, and all that stuff on it, or? Uh, when he moved out, everything was empty. There was a mattress protector cover on it. Mm -hmm. Um. But I had clean sheets and clean bank blankets to put on, like they're available. So where were they available? In the closet. Okay. Um, and I, I did. Yeah. I let him know they were there. Do Do you know if he made the bed? I don't know. But I'm going to assume he. I don't know. What did the blankets look like? that would be used to make that bed? It would be white, white cotton um, linen sheets with, they're white, but they're white stripes, different mm -hmm. sheets of white. So mm -hmm. white stripes going down it. Um, that was a fitted, a fitted cover, then a sheet, and then the pillowcases. And it should have been like a warm blanket in the, closet somewhere. The same color? White or? Maybe gray. Okay. When you say there's pillowcases, how many pillows were on the bed? I'm not sure. I know that we had taken things out of that room before. I don't know. If You're not sure? This is a room you are preparing to rent out. You should know how what the bed linen is, how many sheets you had, did you have any blankets, was there a duvet cover, um, how many pillows, like most beds I know, they have four pillows, right, and I, I start off with my pillows straight on the bed, right, when I go to bed. Within five minutes of getting in bed, the two pillows are brought down a bit. So I'm lying with, like, hugging the pillows. And then if I move around in the night and I face the other, other way in my bed, the other two pillows are brought round so I can cuddle into them. So I have four pillows. I, I'm, I was only thinking the other day I want more pillows on my bed. We used those pillows. I'm not sure what pillows were there. Okay. Did you ever go into the room after you discovered that she was missing? Did you go upstairs to that bedroom? No. No. Okay. No. Oh my God! Once I discovered my child was missing, knowing that she'd spent that night before in a room with a man twice her age. Plus, right, I'd be up in that room, right, what the hell happened? You said she was, she was snuggling up and going to sleep. What the hell happened? Where's my daughter? You took her to school this morning. Where is she? I wouldn't have stood there like she did on that interview, comforting him. I'd have been slapping the... S-H-I-T out of him to find out where my daughter was. He was with her last. He took her to school. Everything. Where is my daughter? I would be furious with him. So when you go to sleep in your room and you're either with Maddie or without Maddie or with Stefan, is your door open? Closed, lights on, lights off. When I go to sleep? Mm -hmm. um, so I have a cat. I can't shut the door. I have to leave it cracked. Mm -hmm. So it stays cracked um, with a little, like a little, like a door stopper mm -hmm. behind it so it doesn't open all the way because my cat will just crack it up. Oh. Um, yeah, but we sleep with the door cracked. Okay, lights on, lights off? Uh, lights off with a YouTube video playing in the background, making playing rain sounds. Okay, with that. Oh no, I don't go to bed with rain sounds.
I go to bed listening to crime documentaries <laughs> all 24-7. I'm on YouTube on my TV watching either YouTubers talk about a crime or watching documentaries talking about crime and I fall asleep listening to crime. So there's a saying out there, don't trust a woman who falls asleep listening to crime. Because they say you learn a lot because even though you're sleeping, your brain is still taking it all in. All right? And yes, it does stop. But if I wake up and the TV is stopped, depending on how awake I am, I'll either pop it back on again or I'll just roll over and go to sleep. Right? But I don't listen to the sound of rain. Would the screen be illuminated, or is it something where a screen, like a phone, where the screen goes black and it still plays? It goes black, yeah. Okay. Um, do you remember it happened that night if you were doing listening to those YouTube videos, or probably was? I listen to it every night, so I probably was. Does it shut off automatically? What she needs is what I've got. I've got this headband, right? And it's chargeable, so you can charge it up. And you can tune it into your TV. Or you can tune it into your phone, Bluetooth it into your phone to get the music. And you can put it either uh, as a headband and just over your ears, so you, like, you can listen to it and fall asleep. Or you can use it as a sleep mask. Brilliant. I... I tried Bluetoothing it into my TV, but it wasn't working. So I said, I'm not going to bother then, because I don't listen to music when I go to bed. I listen to my crime dramas. Um, around like 4 or 5 a.m., but then I'll, I'll notice and I'll press play again. Okay. Is it fair to say... She stated... That once she goes to sleep, she does not wake up. She don't wake up until the alarm comes on the next morning. Unless Stefan comes in the bedroom to get the dog. Why? Right? She's stated that. That you're easily woken up or no? But it sounds like that or... <sighs> Okay. Now, the purpose of you telling or having Maddie sleep with Stefan upstairs is because you told me before that you needed a good night's sleep. If you needed this kind of sleep previously to when Stefan wasn't there, what would happen? You mean if Stefan wasn't there and I needed this good night's sleep? Mm -hmm. Um depends. Um, if I had missed my meds the way I missed them that night and I wasn't feeling, or I was feeling just how I was feeling, I'm not sure if I would have had her sleep, it, have her sleep with me on the other side of the bed or if I would have sent her upstairs to the guest room. But um, she sleeps like a monkey. She sleeps, she rolls, she'll, she'll, she'll start on one end of the bed and end up on top of me by the end of the night and She's a gymnast, I guess. But um, have you ever sent her upstairs to sleep? No, not like not for any of these reasons. Have you ever sent her upstairs to sleep by herself? Alone? Mm -hmm. No. Okay. I'm gonna need to wrap this up. Okay. One more question. Um, does anybody use your phone other than you? Uh, no, except for the day that we were sitting in front of my house and, um, friend six was in the house. That was the only time I've ever, ever let anyone use my phone. And that was Stefan. Stefan had my phone. What about, do you wear an Apple watch? Yes. Does it track any of your movements or anything like that that you know of? Do you sleep with your watch on? No, 
I hardly ever put it on, honestly. Okay. All right. I don't have anything else. Do you have anything real quick, Danielle? No. Do you have anything that you think we should know, Matt? Unfortunately, no. Okay. Good down there? Yeah, I'm good. All right. It's 10.06 a.m. We will conclude this investigative interview with uh, Ms. Soto. Thank you. I'm sorry. Right. Hold on, let's just get rid of this. Right. Okay, what am I doing? So, that was on the 18th of April. Right, okay, a while ago, boy. I'll give it that. But if I can remember back to when I moved into my, where I am now. Hi. I'm sure she could remember where she, where she was and what she was doing and everything literally February, March, April, two months ago when this April interview was done. Right, so anyway, that's the latest of her interviews. Now, as I said, there was some things that was pointed out, like she mentioned a red shirt with a graphic design. Now, that red shirt was in the drawer. And yet, Stefan said on the Tuesday, when he was speaking to the police the first time, that he hadn't slept... He hadn't showered, he hadn't eaten. Yes, you had changed your clothes. Because you changed from your red top to your blue shirt or whatever it was you were wearing. Right? Let's see if I can find that. Where was it now? Let's see what he was wearing on the Tuesday, on the Monday night. Yep. Oh, look at this. Look what he's wearing on the Monday night. I'm just going to turn the sound off. Because I just want to get it right. All right. Right, look. He's got a blue top on, a blue T-shirt. Right? But in the daytime, earlier on that day, he had a red tea, a red top on with some sort of logo or whatever on. Yet he stated the next morning after this, after this, he stated that he hadn't eaten, he hadn't slept, he hadn't showered. But he changed his top. Uh, caught you there, haven't we, uh, Stefan? Right, so there's lots of little things in there. And what I don't agree with, I know this is a deal that was made by her attorneys that they've sort of like said, well, you, you drop all those inconsistencies in her interviews because remember, her daughter had just gone missing. Her daughter was missing, and then she just found out that her daughter had been found on a live. Her head was everywhere. Oh, how do you feel? You know what I mean? No. They'd made a deal with them to drop all that. So they're not going to be chasing her and even prosecuting her for any of the lies she said. How she said at first, she last time she saw Madeline was at 11 o'clock on the Sunday night when she went to bed. Then she said she's seeing her on the Monday morning at 8 o'clock getting ready for school. And then she goes, no, she didn't see her Monday morning. She heard people in the kitchen, but she couldn't be sure who it was. And I'm thinking, are you for real? Are you fecking for real, love? And then you stand there and you're giving him hugs because he's so upset 
in that interview. You make me sick. You honestly do. You trusted him with your life and your daughter's life. Well, how wrong was you? If I was you, I'd, be, I'd, I'd turn myself into the young, to a young away. Right? And abstinate, abstinate from men in general. Because you're hopeless at picking the right men. Right, so I'd like to know about her marriage. Like she was with the father of Madeline for a while. Then they split up. Then she got met some other guy and they got married. And this guy had a daughter of his own. And they lived in a three bedroom house, I think. Because Madeline's daughter had a bedroom. The her partner, her husband's daughter had a, their own bedroom. And they had a bedroom. Then they split up, they get divorced, so then she moves back to that house where Madeline doesn't get a bedroom. Hmm. I, can, I, I find it hard to believe her father would not let Madeline have that bedroom. Even if Jen said, OK, I'll pay you 600 a month, let her have that bedroom if I pay you 600. You know what I mean? She, she had nowhere. Oh, she's going to have a sleepover. So where are all her friends? Where would all her friends go? Where would they sleep? You know what I mean? Oh, Stefan would have a field day, wouldn't he, with all her friends there? Oh, yeah. And yet you wouldn't let her sleep over at a friend's house because you didn't know the father. Oh, oh God. Sorry. You wouldn't let her sleep over at a friend's house because you didn't know the father or the brothers or she could be assaulted. Uh, but you're sending your daughter up to bedroom number four, which had all this sex things, gadgets and creams, a uh, camera stand for a camera or phone to go on, to video, and, oh yeah, don't forget, can't forget this one, the G-U-N, with, and in the backpack was um, cartridges with the bullets in, there was loads of them. And I think I've got all that information on those documents that I've managed to download the other day. And I'm going to go through them tomorrow. You know, I sit here, pies daggling, and just keep getting up to get myself some snacks or coffee to keep myself going to go through them documents. Right? Because there's quite a bit in these documents that I managed to download. But I'm going to see if there's any more documents I can find anywhere, like his arrest warrant, his arrest affidavit. I think I've got the arrest affidavit. I'm not sure. I think I've got that. I have got the 840 odd page one or whatever, but I haven't got all the photos. I do not get all the evidence photos. So I only get the transcript. I haven't got all the evidence photos but we can go through the transcript bit by bit believe me this that will be one you will not want to miss so if you're following this case and you're watching on replay please if you haven't already subscribe because we will be going through every detail of this case every detail we've gone through all the interviews now because the other day I did a live where we went through all the interviews and the video uh, police cams and everything. And when we read these documents, we'll think back to these videos we've been watching. You think, oh, John, that's different from what she said in the police. You know what I mean? In the videos, that's different from what she said to the news people. So, Please, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Stay updated with all future videos and lives where you can come and join in with the chat 
and give us your opinions. Right? Give us your views on this case. And give this video a like and share. And leave me a comment. Right? Because this case is just like a rabbit hole. You know, you go down a rabbit hole and you got different... You go to the left or you go to the right or you carry straight on. It's just like that. It's a rabbit run. All right? You imagine, have you ever seen ants in the soil? Right? And they dig the way through the soil and they've got little... It's like that. It's like the little ant run. The ant run. You've got all these different... Everything. So, we've listened to the teachers... And what they had to say, which I didn't pick up a lot of them, apart from the fact that she was very tired constantly. She was very anxious and all that. And you hear the mum talk about the two medications, right? This is another point. You hear the mother talk about the medication in the morning and the medication on the night. Yep. You don't hear her once mention about the inhaler. Right? Now, that uh, tablet she mentioned, the purple tablet. GBH, was it? GBH and whatever. I think he gave Maggie one of them. Because why would Maggie say it looked different, it looked bigger? She knows the medication she takes. So why would she tell her mum, well, that tablet I took last night or whatever seemed a lot bigger than usual? And then why would Jen feel she needed to talk to Stefan about it? Because he... I took one of her tablets to give to Madeline. And we've also got the Google searches he did on the run-up to her death, her unaliving. And he was looking at, like, all these uh, medicines and whatever. And don't forget his parents were dog breeders, poodle breeders, were they not? Poodle or something like that. They would have all that sort of stuff in their home as well. Right? So, yeah, we'll be looking into all of that. All of it. And um, I think I've also got the information on what her friends have said. Um, there was video, I think, but we're not showing the video because they are minors. But I think we got what they've said as well to the police. So I'll be going through it all. Whatever I've got, which I was able to download the other day, I will be going through it all. But first of all, I've got to go through it all so I can um, redact any information like dates, names, addresses, dates of birth, anything like that, phone numbers. I've got to redact all that because there's a there's some that haven't redacted. Okay, and we cannot put names and date of births and addresses out there online. So I'm just going to see how I can do it. I need to be able to get that one P uh, form opened. I think I've got it. I think I did download it again here. Uh, uh, No. Right. I know I've got it on my USB port. I've got that on my storage. But when I, even when I opened it, when it was downloaded on my laptop, it was just giving me a blank screen and it wouldn't let me go to any other pages. It was going zero page of zero. I'm going, there's 800 odd pages. Where, where are they? So I thought perhaps it didn't download it fully. So I downloaded it again. And the same happened again. I'm thinking, but I can go on the app 
and open it and read it on the app, but it's not downloading it. So I'll try again to download it to see what happens. Anyway, I'm going to leave it at that because it's gone two hours. And like I said, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. Give this video a like and I will see you all on the next one. So till then, stay safe.